and we are off to the Sciences Vital March and we wanted to explain our signs in case they're not obvious. First Trish is going to explain about feeding the world. So with this sign I'm trying to show that we want to eat food and that's not something that happens by magic. We and I want to eat food quickly so... I need to talk quickly. You need to talk quickly because it's nearly lunchtime. Um, okay. So, uh, research is required so that everyone in the world can have enough food and this is what I'm trying to show, that if you just cut funding, people are going to starve. Okay. Beautifully done. I'm not quite sure which way round my sign is. Good, it's the right one, thank you Pete. It says, science is vital because I like chocolate, because there are lots of steps in the process of making chocolate that require scientific research. On my back, I'm not going to turn around and show you, but it's sustainable agriculture. Everything from, you need pollinators, if we're developing pesticides, um, protecting soil fertility, sustainable agriculture, as Trisha said, needs scientific research. Transportation, particularly, we're going to need greener transport to get chocolate to me, and it's processing and packaging. And um, obviously it needs me as well, and to keep me alive we need medical research. Although, I'm okay now, maybe when I'm older, someone's going to need to fix me. So that you can eat chocolate. So that I can eat chocolate. <laughs> we're going to Indian pack. No, it's okay, I've only got this up because we've nowhere else to put it because we're running out of room. Anyway, we're eating, we're in the fish and chip shop on the way to the rally, and we were going to talk about reasons that science is vital, food obviously, um, electricity, lights, um, metal, finding new resources, better ways of mining them, um, Trisha's coat is posh fabric, scientifically designed, waterproof, waterproof. Um, building, better building design. Okay, someone else's turn. That doesn't involve food and sustainability because Glasses, that's kind of I can see because someone's developed lightweight, easy to manufacture glasses, so I can actually see better. And people science. are now developing laser eye technology, so science is still still being used in that one. Um, what about you? Mm. Beard trips. Science invented beard trips. Yes. And electricity to the greener electricity. Fishery science that tells me I shouldn't eat fish, hence I just ate chips. Nutrition science that tells me if I ate that many chips every day, it would be really bad for me. Dismapped, and I thought this is ridiculous. They really are thinking of dismantling UK science. Now I'm not British, in the interest of full disclosure, <laughs> you might be able to tell, but I came here from America because I think the science is actually better here than it is in the States. a message to the gentlemen and ladies in this building, the Treasury, that we think that cutting funding to science will actually backfire because it is precisely the research we do, the development, the innovation, and the tech that fuels the economy. And if we cut the sector, we will be shooting ourselves in the foot, as Patrick Moore said on our website so prosaically. So, if, if the economy is flagging, the last thing we want to do is to dismantle scientists and engineers. It makes absolutely no sense. They will not only be tying the one hand behind the back of scientists, but also they'll be turning their back on patients and the public and their future being as well. Thank you very much and see you at the lobby. And we, you'll hear a lot today about the economic importance of science and engineering and all of the political implications and the cultural implications. But without the playfulness that, that resulted in last week's Nobel Prize for the discovery of gaffeine, we all know, all scientists know how much you've got to actually relax, you've got to be able to kind of play. And these, the current cuts are really going to encroach on that ability, which is the one thing that England and Britain and all of us here are very very, very good at. And so playfulness is the other thing I think is going to get cut. We're not careful. Foreign companies consistently invest billions of pounds more in UK research and development than we spend abroad. That means that science and engineering are some of our proudest exports. Why? Because UK, UK science and engineering is amongst the most exciting and efficient in the world. And just this week, as has been talked about, we had three new Nobel laureates in science. Three.
uh, I thought uh, I learnt a lot today because I'm I'm a scientist, so I like to focus on the little things. I like to focus on my work and exactly equal for equal of how science can help the world. And today I, I learnt from a lot more bigger overview from people that really know what they're talking about from a lot of different fields. How why science is important at a much larger scale rather than because I know that this insect, or that insect, all of these conditions, which is what I'm interested in, and don't see the bigger picture. I think I'm pretty much the same as Trish. And although maybe I'm a little bit up in the scale of what I'm interested in, it's environmental issues, food security, but there's all these different reasons, economic reasons, medical reasons. Everybody here had a different take on why science is vital and I learned a lot from that. Okay. Okay, I'm going to speak to a few of the people here about who they are and why they're here. I'm Andrew Holding and I work for the Medical Research Council at the Laboratory of Molecular Biology in Cambridge. My research is on how proteins interact and the last work I did was on a gene which is known to give predisposed people to leukaemia. And we showed that this, what this gene actually did in the human body, before then no one knew what it did. And by that research, we now hope that other people will be going to continue the work to make new gene therapies and new cures to hopefully stop future people getting the gene. Okay, my name is Dr. Malcolm Furban from King's College London Physics Department. I work on uh, cosmology and dark matter. And uh, science is vital because in this country we need science to grow the economy, just as has been argued today. We can't compete when it comes to mass manufacture and cheap labour. We need to have a skilled workforce and we need to have scientists in order to man that workforce and bring the economy forward. We shouldn't be relying so much on the banks, we should be looking forward because the banks won't be there all the time. We need science to have a strong uh, basis of skill. Okay, uh, my name is Stephen Curry. I'm a professor of structural biology at Imperial College in London, and I'm here as science is vital. I think science is vital because I think our future very much depends on science. We know that the country is in a very difficult financial situation, but the real options that we have are either to cut science or to invest in it. And all our competitors are investing in it, and so we are going to lose our position. But we already do spectacularly well for the little money that we do spend on science but we're going to lose our competitive edge. So science is vital, huh? Um, how has science affected my day today? Well, actually, I've been at a rehearsal this morning for a concert of Janacek's Magnetic Mass, uh, which is going to be recorded and put out on CD. So part of what science contributes is all the science that... Um, creates the sound engineering both during our performances when it will be recorded but also uh, in the editing suite afterwards uh, not to mention all the science that creates the packaging and, and uh, uh, the science that creates the possibility to transfer our recording onto a disc etc etc so yeah I guess science is vital <laughs> vital because the population is expanding and we're using resources at a faster rate than we can extract them and these resources are going to run out so the population is going to be enormous and we're going to have to find clever ways of getting everything everyone needs and getting it to everyone that needs it so I think now more than ever we need to put um, a lot of funding into science because it's going to get complicated I'm Simon Hughes, uh, I work for the Medical Research Council in Guy's Hospital in King's College London and uh, I'm here because uh, with Matthew here 20 years ago um, I, we established an organisation called British Scientists Abroad and uh, I think during the 90s that really folded because British scientists like us were coming back to Britain, maybe now it needs to be restarted. <laughs> Run, I'm the organizer of Science is Vital. I, we just finished the demo and I'm absolutely ecstatic and touched and shattered. And I can't believe thousands of people came here to support science. I'm really proud of everyone for coming out and just defending this great thing that we do. This, this amazing thing that we do. But the fact that people are willing to come all the way from Aberdeen 
Cornwall. It's just, uh, I'm just overwhelmed.